Hi, I cannot wait to show you this recipe. This has been something I've been working on for about six weeks. And if you've heard that there's a pumpkin shortage, a canned pumpkin shortage this year, it's because I've been working on this recipe for the past six weeks. It's my fault. Um, we're gonna make a low carb pumpkin cheesecake. And I'm so excited about this recipe because it uses my grandmother's pumpkin pie recipe. Well kind of my grandmother's pumpkin pie recipe. Um, I had to make it low carb, and so combining the two I think has been really important. We'll talk about that as we go, but let's get started on the crust because we have a lot to do. There are three main parts to this cheesecake. The first is the crust. Now, what I've done is I've put in here pecans, and I'm using in my food processor the blade, the very dull blade, not the sharp blade. Pecans have a pretty high fat content, and so when you start to pulverize them in a food processor, you can make a pecan butter pretty quickly. So I'm using a more dull blade. It gives me a coarser grind, but that's fine because this is part of the crust. Um, I also am going to put in here, so this is one cup of pecans that have been um, uh, pulverized, I guess you would say, and coarsely chopped. We'll call it coarsely chopped. To that, I'm going to add uh, one third cup of hazelnut flour. You don't have to use hazelnut flour. Use almond flour if you have it. I'm using hazelnut because it's a little lower in carbs than almond flour. When you think about this crust, there's 14 total carbs in a cup of the pecans. The third cup of almond flour has about 16 carbs. Hazelnut is less than that. And my mind just went blank as to how many it is. I think it's closer to seven or eight. I'll have to look it up. But I'm lowering the overall carb count. The total carb count, not including the erythritol or the sweetener for this, the total carb count for the crust is going to be about 36 total carbs, not net, but total carbs. So if you, may, if you uh, slice it into 12 sections, you've already got three carbs per serving, three total carbs per serving, just in the crust. So I tried to keep it as low as I could. That's why I'm using pecans and hazelnut instead of um, almond flour. Okay, so I've got my cup of coarsely ground pecans, my one third cup of hazelnut flour, use almond flour if you prefer, I'm going to add to it a third of a cup of granulated sweetener. This is erythritol. Use your favorite. It's one third cup. I am going to add some liquid sweetener to uh, offset the cooling effect of the swerve. I'm going to add one half of a teaspoon of cinnamon to give some cinnamon flavor to that crust. It makes it really yummy. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of oat fiber. Now you all know I love oat fiber. The oat fiber is just a fiber, so it doesn't add carbs. If you don't have oat fiber, you can leave it out, or you could add a tablespoon of coconut flour. The coconut flour will add more carbs, um, so you don't have to have it, but I just love the texture that the oat fiber gives it. If you have it, throw it in there. And then I'm going to add um, a, make sure I get this right, I think it's five, tablespoons it is five tablespoons of melted butter and so I had melted that ahead of time I'm just going to throw all of that in the food processor and get all that wonderful Kerrygold out of there and I'm going to mix it up now I could probably mix it by hand but I'm going to throw it in here I'm also going to uh, not forget add my liquid sweetener I'm going to add because I used a third a cup of sword swerve I'm going to use six uh, I think that was seven drops of liquid sweetener. Use stevia if you don't like liquid sucralose. Not everyone can use liquid sucralose, but stevia and Swerve work really nicely together. Um, let me put this on here. I'm gonna give it a quick pulse. Oops. And that's it. And I was double checking myself um, to make sure I hadn't put vanilla extract in here. Usually I do put vanilla extract in everything. The cinnamon smells great. So I'm gonna mix it up like that, get the sides down. And because of all that wonderful melted butter, it's coming together. And you can see how coarse it is. I'm gonna put it into my springform pan. Now, let me give you a little tip on this. You can use a springform pan or you can just use a pie plate. Um, the springform pan is what we traditionally use for cheesecakes. And of course the top comes off and you're just left with the bottom. I found that just a deep a, a pie pan works really well. This says we have wonderful potters in our area and this is from a local potter. And so you can just press the crust into this if you'd like. If you don't have a springform pan, 
just don't let anything stop you from making this dessert. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, so anyway, let me show you kind of what it looks like when I pour it out. Whoops. Um, get all the good out. And I have added to, in the past, some salt with this to give it more flavor. So you could add a half teaspoon of salt if you wanted. I have not added it to this. Um, salt is kind of like the vanilla, it just intensifies the flavor. So this is what it looks like. And you can see it's fairly coarse um, and, and kind of roughly chopped. And you even see some larger pieces of pecan in there. And that's okay. We're just gonna take that and press it down into the pan and I've done one already it looks like this and you can see it's just pressed down pretty evenly throughout you can press it up on the sides if you'd like um, and this makes a fairly thick crust so you could I've actually considered you could reduce the carbs by making the crust thinner and to do that I would just do I would probably um, do a third of all of the ingredients and that would reduce the carbs further. You could also make this crustless. If you use that um, first pie pan that I was showing you, you could just make it crustless, and I think it would be equally delicious and much lower carb per serving if you did that. So we're gonna make this for the holiday, so I'm gonna include the crust, and this will go off probably, well, not this exact one, but one just like this will go off to either my in-laws or to my mom's house. We actually have three family get-togethers, and so, there's never, um, there's never any shortage of folks to share this stuff with. So make your crust and then set it aside. And now we're gonna make the cheesecake part. Okay, let's make the cheesecake part. This, so, this part is super, super easy. You're gonna look at me and go, really, that's it? This is based off my cheesecake recipe that I posted in another video. So if you wanna make just a flat cheesecake, that's fine. What I've got in here are two eight ounce packages of cream cheese. I've used the uh, cream cheese. There are three brands I've found that have one carb per serving. So if you use the cream cheese as one carb per serving, you can go to uh, Sam's and get the big long boxes. For some reason, that's one carb per serving. Um, it's just a different formula for some reason. Um, Trader Joe's brand, if you have a Trader Joe's, it's $1.69 at our Trader Joe's and one carb per serving. And then the Fresh Market, um, actually there are four brands. The Fresh Market has their store brand and that's one carb per serving. And then there's also Organic Valley. It seems like the uh, one at the Fresh Market, which is a local store for us, is $1.75 uh, per thing. And then the Organic Valley is like $3 plus per package. So I try to go with the Trader Joe's or the Fresh Market I can. But anyway, this is two eight ounce containers. So 16 ounces of full fat cream cheese is in my KitchenAid. All right, to that, I'm going to add a third to a half cup of swerve. Use more swerve if you don't like using the liquid. Um, again, I like to use the swerve, the granulated swerve, the erythritol. Actually, I think it's erythritol. I like to use that with a liquid because it, um, the cooling effect of the swerve is offset. So I'm gonna mix this up. And to this, I'm going to add one third cup of heavy cream. To make sure I'm telling you that right. As always, the recipe will be in the video description, so you can see it, you don't have to write it down. But yeah, this is, I'm sorry, one quarter cup. One quarter cup of heavy cream. Say the wrong thing. I'm going to add two eggs. Two eggs. And I'm gonna let that all visit around a little bit. I am gonna add the liquid sucralose. Again, you can use more granulated, and use whatever granulated sweetener you like. I'm going to add eight drops to that and my stand mixer has been getting cranky in its old age it um, I have to stop and push things down so and what I've done let me go ahead and tell you I've made this recipe already today well maybe that's why it's not working right <laughs> uh, maybe I didn't have it, the attachment in there but the cheese the cream cheese is kind of getting stuck on the sides but I've made this twice today because I'm going to show you two ways to make this cheesecake. We're going to make it as a layered pumpkin pie on top and, whoops, and cheesecake on the bottom. Can't think and talk. We're going to make it two ways. We're going to make it as a layer with cheesecake on the bottom and the pumpkin pie on the top. And then we're going to make it all mixed together. Um, and let me tell you, I love my grandmother's pumpkin pie. I'm really picky about pumpkin pie. 
um, because she didn't put a lot of seasonings, a lot of flavorings in it. And everybody thinks that his or her grandmother made the best pumpkin pie. I know mine did, <laughs> personally. But I am so excited to make a low-carb version. But when I started calculating the carbs on the pumpkin, holy cow, it was a lot of carbs. One 15-ounce can of pumpkin has, I think, what, 36 or so carbs, which is a lot. So if you're just making a pumpkin pie, that's a lot of carbs. So I decided that making it with the cheesecake would stretch the pumpkin a little bit. And by stretching the pumpkin, I could have more pumpkin flavor with fewer carbs, have a little bit bigger piece of the pie. <laughs> so, okay, that's mixing. So what I've done is 16 ounces of cream cheese, one quarter cup of heavy cream, two eggs, and I put one third cup of granulated sweetener, and then I put the liquid sucralose. To this, I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I like to add a teaspoon in the oops. And one quarter teaspoon of lemon juice. Don't use lemon extract, use lemon juice for the best flavor. So we're gonna add that in there. So, depending on how you want to make your cheesecake, you either want to stop here and put it in the crust, or you make the pumpkin pie part and add it in. So I've already, since I, like I said, I've already made this once today, and this still needs to be mixed up a little bit better. But what I'm gonna do is take the crust we just made, and this is the one I'm gonna layer. So I've got the crust we just made. Here is the cheesecake filling I made earlier today, and I'm just gonna pour it into the crust. Okay. And that's lumpier than I like, but that's okay. It'll all come out in the bake. And the oven is on at 350. Now, if you want to kind of put that pumpkin-y flavor throughout, even if you're doing layers, you could add some cinnamon or some pumpkin pie spice. I did not do that um, to this layer. But anyway, so this is gonna go in right on top. And then when we have our pumpkin layer made, we'll put that on the top as well. Man, that looks good. If you guys weren't watching, I'd put my finger on it. But... Okay, it's gonna go there. So that's that. So we have our cheesecake part made, and I wanna make sure I've got this all rinsed down. So you can either set that, you can set that aside, and let's make the pumpkin pie part now. It really is not a difficult recipe, and I love that, except for maybe the, um, the hazelnut flour that I used um, in the crust, and you don't have to use that, and except for the um, oat fiber, and again, you don't have to use that. This really is a crust or a recipe that you can make with ingredients that aren't strange, ingredients that are really easy to find. Let's mix up our pumpkin pie part. Now, if you want it, if you can eat a little higher carb, you could use this pumpkin pie part just as it is for a really yummy pie. I'm starting with one can, a 15 ounce can of pumpkin. You can do your own pumpkin. You could use a cup or so of um, fresh pumpkin, that's fine. Since it's in short supply this year, you might wanna do that. So I'm starting with a one 15 ounce can of pumpkin. I'm going to add to that two eggs, and I probably should have beaten those ahead of time, but I didn't. So I'm gonna add two eggs. And I'm not gonna worry about mixing this so incredibly well, just because um, I'm gonna add it into, this is the one where I'm gonna blend it in. Normally I would have my hand mixer and I'd be using a hand mixer to do this. So I've got the egg in there, two eggs. Now I'm gonna use melted butter. And you know what, this is four and a half ounces. Actually it was supposed to be eight tablespoons. It's eight tablespoons of Kerrygold that I've melted. So eight tablespoons of butter. That sounds like a lot of butter, but honestly, I think that was the secret to my grandmother's recipe. And I have made probably, gosh, over the past six weeks, I've probably made, I don't know, nine, 10, 12 different versions of this pumpkin pie, trying to get it exactly right. I've experimented with protein powder in it, and I keep coming back to this very basic recipe. So eight tablespoons of butter, two eggs, one can of pumpkin, 
three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. That's three quarters of a cup. And it is gonna be kind of like a custard. And if you think about what I've added, I've added the eggs, which have a fraction of carbs. I've added the butter, which has no carbs. I've added the cream, which does have carbs. But pretty much the only thing in here that really has carbs is my pumpkin. So um, you could stretch it with another egg um, too, just like we were talking about stretching it with the cheesecake. Okay, this is one uh, almost one half, it's, one th <laughs> it's between one third and one half cup of Swerve. Again, use what you prefer for sweetener. Um, if you use a third cup, then you may wanna supplement with a liquid sweetener, just like I've said in all of these, having the um, liquid sweetener helps offset the cooling effect. Use whatever liquid sweetener you prefer. I am going to use um, my liquid sucralose, and I'm going to use eight drops. And that's it. Okay, I'm also going to add, and again, this recipe's written down, so if I forget to tell you something, I'm going to add cinnamon. Now, I don't like a lot of seasonings in my pumpkin pie. I mentioned that before. My grandmother used pretty much cinnamon, and that was it. And so I'm using a tea, uh, I think it's a tablespoon. It may be a little less than that, but a tablespoon of cinnamon. That's all I want in my pumpkin pie. If you want to add pumpkin pie spice, you can do that. If you want to add nutmeg or cloves, that's fine. If you want to use a liquid pumpkin pie extract, use that. Um, use, you know, whatever, since your grandmother made the best pie and my grandmother made the best pie, use whatever um, is the best at your house. This is vanilla extract. It is two teaspoons. Don't go short on the vanilla extract. Two teaspoons. It's that wonderful vanilla flavor that goes with the cinnamon and the pumpkin to make this a wonderful um, fall treat. I was gonna say part, and a wonderful part of your family's Thanksgiving. Okay, last thing we're going to add is salt. It's a quarter teaspoon salt and one teaspoon of baking powder. And that baking powder is gonna give it just a little bit of rise, not much. So we've got that all mixed together. And again, if you're going to layer, what you would do is now just put it on top of the cheesecake. What I'm going to do is put that in here to mix it all up. And I'll take this that I made earlier and put it on top of the um, the cheesecake we just did. So, I wish I had my daughter to help me. She's outside working on a project. I'm gonna put this right around here. My oven is on at 350. And again, you can do this without a crust. You can do it just as its own pie. That's fine. It's gonna be nice and high. I can't wait to get this out of the oven and show you. Um, it is a little wet, this pumpkin. It's really interesting. The Trader Joe's pumpkin was a little more wet than the Libby's brand that I opened. And what you can do, um, my grandmother would do this, she would put it in a pan and, and warm it, heat it to get some of the moisture out to make it a little thicker. And that does intensify the pumpkin flavor. I may wish I had done that. So the oven's at 350. I may also have to turn the oven down to 325. It's going to bake for about an hour and 10 minutes in my oven. Um, and that's been pretty consistent. Every time I've made it, it's taken that long. So let's take this pumpkin, let's try it just to see. Oh man, that is so good. I could just sit down with a spoon right now, raw eggs and all. All right, let's add this in here, actually. Yeah, we'll just add it right in here. And I could have just put it all into my KitchenAid, but I wanted you to see the process I was going through as I made the pumpkin in case you wanted to layer it. If you're not gonna layer it, throw it all in the KitchenAid and keep moving. Um, it does make it easier to do it this way. And, you know, which do we like best? I kind of like having the layers of the pumpkin pie cheesecake, um, but having it all mixed together is really good too because it makes the pumpkin flavor go even further. Uh, someone had asked me, why are you making the pumpkin cheesecake? Why not just make the pumpkin pie? And again, as I explained, the cheesecake part really does help to stretch the pumpkin. It doesn't add the carbs. I think the cheesecake add the cheesecake part 
ads, maybe, I made a mess. Um, I'm thinking the cheesecake part, the whole part is maybe um, two carbs per serving, a little under two carbs per serving. So as you can see, it's kind of a bargain when it comes to carbs. Actually, it's less than that. Um, I think it's one and a half. I calculated it and now I can't remember. That's it. All right, I'm gonna scrape all of this down and we've got this other crust. So I'll get it scraped down. I'll pour it in and then we'll put it in the oven to bake with the other one. Now, cheesecakes are one of those things that they just taste so much better once they've been um, cooled overnight. They really, I tell folks they need to go a minimum of six hours, but they're really better overnight. Um, I'm gonna try and get this video up, so I don't know that mine will sit that long. <laughs> this stand mixer hates me. <laughs> Thank you, dear. <laughs> um, okay, the joys of not having a, a real cooking show. Okay, this is going to be wonderful. I wish you could try it. My husband is licking the batter behind the camera, and um, the look on his face says that we got something right here. All right, I'm just going to put it there. This is going to be a big cheesecake. Let me just warn you. Now, if you're one of those fussy cooks who doesn't like the top to be cracked, then certainly, um, I found some cream cheese not mixed, then certainly um, you can use a water bath. So you could put this in a pan, put water halfway up the sides. That's a lot of batter. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks for your help cleaning that up. Okay. Let's do get that a try. You want to? Mm. It's going to be good. I wish I could hand you a slice out. All right, let's put this in the oven and um, then I'll be back when it's done. Okay, let's check on this. There's a little bit of smoke there because some of the oil has leached out, but I wanted you to see how this looks. This is the one that we put the uh, pumpkin mixture in and then this was the one that we did I believe in layers and what's happened is the cheesecake comes up the side and the pumpkin's kind of in the middle. See how it's still really jiggly? It's not quite ready. It's been on a little over an hour and 10 minutes. I've turned the oven down and what I'll end up doing, I don't want to be too too wiggly, what I'll end up doing in about five or ten minutes I'll turn the oven off and crack the door it'll finish cooking during that time. So don't be wigged out if it is too wiggly, too jiggly. Don't, don't let that scare you too, too much. It will set up, it will be fine, especially as it cools. But it's gone about an hour and 10 minutes so far. Gonna let it go another five to 10 minutes. Turn the oven off, crack it open, and it will be fine. Okay, so our cheesecakes are ready. They've been baked, they've been in the fridge, they've been sitting for about seven or eight hours now. And so I can't wait to cut into these. Um, I've taken a knife and kind of gone around the edges a little bit on this one at least. And it's, in our, it's still in the springform pan. So let's pop it open and take it off. Wow. Okay, so we can like get some of this off and try that if we want to. <laughs> get a little sample. Wow. This is the one where we mix the pumpkin with the cheesecake and it got a little brown. I don't know if my oven isn't acting right or what. It got a little brown on this side. So what I could do is I could mix a little bit of sour cream and some uh, cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice and smooth it around the top or around the outside edges. Um, I could crumb, crush up some pecans and put that on there as well if I wanted to make it pretty. Let's cut into it. Actually, I'm going to do this. Let's cut into it. And if I'm doing 1 12th, I'm gonna do this, and then I would need to get three pieces out of this. So realistically, this is probably very close to 1 12th. And I think I've calculated that 1 12th of a piece is about five carbs. Let's see what five carbs looks like. This may be too big to get it out nicely. 
Oh, wow. Oops. It didn't come out nicely on that side. There we go. That's a decent looking piece. Get some of the crust. So that's what it looks like with the cream cheese and the pumpkin pie mix all around. And I can tell I'm gonna need to cut another piece. So let's do another 1 12th piece. And I think this is probably pretty accurate. What do you think, Grace? You're just here for the cake. <laughs> You're just here to help mom taste dust, right? Okay, and sorry, part of that got off in there. Okay, so this is the one that I mixed all the filling together, okay? Now, let's open this one. You're gonna go ahead and try that? This one is where we layered it together, and it didn't rise as tall as it has in the past, so I don't know what that means, but let's take it off and take a peek. Um, it may be, just be a difference in the springform pans. And, hey, thank you, sweetie. Let's give it a cup. What happened was the pumpkin pie went in the middle and the cheesecake came up over the sides, which is not atypical. Again, if I'm cutting this in twelfths, I'm trying to be mindful of the serving size. And this would be about one twelfth. And I'll go ahead and cut another one. And then you can see that was actually a little small. That's oh, actually a little smaller than one twelfth, isn't it? Because I should have used a quarter of the cheesecake at that point so we're doing okay with the pieces with the serving size here's this one and you can see what it looks like you can it's layered you see the layers okay so that's layered and here's that layer Oop. <laughs> as I dump it okay so here's a layered piece for you. And that's your other piece. All right. Let me grab a fork. And this is the layered. What do you think? You don't like it, do you? What I like about this is I really can take a layer of just the pumpkin and enjoy that. It's just pumpkin pie. Something funky happened with the layers there. And it's like, I don't know. Anyway, that's the layers. <laughs> Somebody else want to try. This is the mixed. <laughs> you want to try a piece? What do you think, Grace? What's your favorite? The layer is good. It's, this one doesn't seem as sweet, though. Hmm. Okay, I like the I like the mixed. This is absolutely my favorite. Um, my husband is telling me he really likes the layered. What do you think? I like the layered. They like the layered. I like the mix because in the mix, it's really a great pumpkin flavor and not so much layered. Whichever you decide to do, whether you try the layered or the mixed. Oops. <laughs> I hope that you and your family enjoy it.